We are looking at the book of James. If you can read with me, please. From uh, chapter 1, verse 2. Consider it pure joy. Everybody tell your neighbor, pure joy. And that's not the Jews. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know, you know, you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. We're talking. Let's go for it. Hallelujah. First point. Coming up. Within the next second. In the name of patience. And Jesus. <laughs> covenant. Very interesting spelling. Covenant. Covenant. Okay. My question, my brother, my sister. We can be in covenant with stress. We can be in covenant with success. That is going good with me when I have success. We can be in covenant with our emotions. And my life depends on what's happening with my emotions. Everything fine, then I'm fine. My circumstances fine, then I'm fine. Because I'm in covenant, I'm faithful, I'm loyal to that thing. I can be in covenant with myself, in covenant with my flesh. But I need to choose to say, I will be in covenant with him and him alone. Even if I feel, I read the word and nothing is happening, I pray and I, it's, everything feels dead. If I feel I don't have breakthroughs, doesn't matter what, I choose to say, I will covenant with him and him alone. Hello? In certain relationships, you can feel, hey, it's going tough, it's going rough. But you make a certain choice to say, I will focus in that. I will be faithful in that. I will be loyal in that. In the name of Jesus. Hello? Are you with me? So my question overall with the seven points will be, you're in covenant with who? With who? First of all, we're looking at attitude. Attitude, that's verse two. Attitude, how are you, we getting there? Consider it pure joy. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, whenever you face challenges, whenever you face frustration, intimidation, whatever can come against you, consider it pure joy. That does not mean you have an emotion of joy. That doesn't say get an emotion of joy. That's an attitude I choose. I choose that joy will be in me during in all these things that I'm going through. Hello? I choose a specific attitude. The joy of the Lord will be my strength. Consider it pure joy. Why? Whenever you go through many kinds of trials. Hello? Come on, man. Somebody coming up here. I just want to testify. I have a lot of joy because I'm going through a lot of trials. I just wanted to testify about that. Thank you very much. And then everybody clap hands and you go and sit. What amazing testimony. And the testimony is that you can find joy in the midst of the trial, in the midst of the circumstance. But many times we use the joy or the faith as a trick to change the circumstance. And then... To win the race means to have joy in the circumstance. To win the race is not necessarily that the circumstances must change because of your joy. And that the testing of your faith is that the circumstances changed. The testing of the faith is that you can have faith in the midst of the circumstances. Are you with me? Faith and joy is not a trick to get something. Joy is a goal where God wants you to enter the joy that your master enjoys. So when at the end of the day, 
you're standing before the Lord, he says, this is part of the end goal. That you will have the joy that your master enjoys. That you will enjoy life like he enjoys it. But if we say, no, I must just first deal with the trials and the frustrations and all these stuff. I must deal with all of that <sighs> so that I will have joy at the end of the day. With God, it's the other way around. Are you with me? I can have the joy now. I can have the joy now. And enjoy life with the master. May God help you. To understand that choose a certain attitude because you choose the attitude of Christ he's gonna have a certain attitude in heaven and he has now already that attitude our attitude must become like his attitude hello so that there's heart-to-heart -heart connection so it's not change the attitude for something to happen change the attitude because you mustn't be naughty you must be you start with sweet is what suit in English sweet you must be sweet not not naughty Something like that. No, man. Opposite of naughty is? Good. Well behaved. Okay. Well behaved. All right. So it's not about that. Hello. It's about having a life with him today. Where you can enjoy what he enjoys. That you can be fulfilled with what he is fulfilled with. Are you with me? Consider it. You consider it you make a choice you make a choice that it will be pure joy when i go through all these things because there's a reason because you know you know everybody you know you know all the issues you know all the stuff you know all the the intimidation you know all the things that's supposed to happen no you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance point two is faith testing of your faith why why the testing of your faith must produce perseverance testing of your faith that you have a pure faith that your faith is pure but once again like the joy the faith is not just a trick to get over the rubbish faith is a product from the word and the word is not a trick at the end of the day word, the word is a person before before you were born before man god took man the clay and ruach the breath into the clay before all of that god said to father son holy spirit let us make man you started as a word in the trinity you with me so the word is not a trick the word was the excitement from the place of excitement from the place of a dream that father son holy spirit had so if the word works in my life and the fruit of this word is faith faith comes from hearing hearing from the word romans 10 17 hey so if faith comes from this word faith can be beautiful faith says i know who he is and doesn't matter what the fruit of this the fruit of this awesome word where everything will pass away away heaven and earth but this word will not pass away and the fruit of this is a faith and this faith is telling me who he is this faith is seeing it the way he sees it and when you can see what your dad is seeing when you can when you can see what your hero your king your master your lover is seeing that is amazing just the fact that you can see what he sees not faith so that you can get out of trouble not just faith so that you can get rid of the devil yes but the, the honor that you can see what he is seeing you can say what he is saying you can feel what he is feeling your heart can go with what his heart is going with and that all has to do with faith are you with me so my brother my sister let's not just try and, and and have the faith as a trick to get out of something into something else are you with me but when you say i have faith then it's not like i have faith oh and it's going to be tested uh, uh, let me see if the faith is going to work faith is in the person 
Jesus Christ. Amen. Because the word is from him. Faith, the testing of your faith. Okay, let me just go with that one also. Gold. Oh, my faith must be tested. Oh, it's rough. Oh, you have gold. The gold must be purified. Oh, man, I, I, I hate it. You know, I have gold. You know, it's rough. I have gold and it must be tested. Come on. What about being excited about the fact that you have faith? It must be tested so that it can become pure. So that tested so that your faith is from the word. Your faith is not from performance. Not because somebody psyched you up. A lot of people have a lot of faith out there because they are psyched up for something to happen. Are you with me? But that your faith to make sure that God knows that you are building your house on this rock, the word. The revelation of who he is. The faith is tested so that your faith will be pure that when you love god when you look at him by faith your worship will be pure your prayer will be pure will be beautiful will be clean ah are you with me otherwise it's it's all messy muddy so let's consider it pure joy let's see purpose in things that we're going through. Joshua, Caleb, oh, the giants, they are our food. Not because we're cannibals, but because we're going to grow through it. We're going to grow through it. Our faith can become more pure. I want this God to become more pure. Therefore, I will go through circumstance. And if I'm not going through any circumstances, what do you need faith for? In that context of growing, 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 growing. Are you with me? I'm not talking about faith as a trick. But in the midst of circumstances that I can see him. My faith worked when the circumstances changed? No. My faith worked when I could see Christ in the circumstances. Faith serves you in your relationship to see him. Because seeing him, knowing him, that is eternal life. So faith forms a basis so that you can have an eternal quality relationship today with Christ. Doesn't matter what. So your faith works. Your faith is excellent. If you can walk with Christ in the midst of whatever. The, you have real success if you have a lot of money or a lot of success in your life. And you can still see Christ in the center. That's, that is powerful. That is faith that can work. Because that was the moment where they covenanted more with their success than with God. And then they fell away into a lot of rubbish. That was the only most powerful way to get one of the 12 disciples that walked with Jesus for more than three years. To get him away. To think, okay, I will, I will tell them, no, don't go with Christ, I go with the money. I go with the money. Not other temptations, but money. The success in that. No, 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 no. We not go for success with the money, first of all. Be careful. The rich man must be careful. You with me? But, may God bless you as you grow in your faith. That you know my faith in who he is. That's the most, most, most precious in my heart. Money will be a servant for the purposes of God. Money will not have a place here. Money will be a servant that will do as I say in the name of Jesus Christ. You with me? Faith. Number three. Obedience. Obedience. Consider it pure joy. Whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know, you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature. So that you may be mature. Know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. What is perseverance? Perseverance so that at the end of the day you can obey. There's a purpose for the perse perseverance. When you go to the gym and you're going to do some gym, I know a lot of young people, oh, they hate it to go to the gym. It's not lacquer. It's not nice to go in gym. It's, it's so because you come always out a failure. 
Is that true? I don't know. Because you're going to push that. Sorry, Easters. What's it? Those, those weights. You're going to push it up to the point where you fail to pick up that extra 10 kilogram. And then you're going to do the next one until you fail to, to take the next kilogram. And the next one you're going to push until you fail. Oh, you fail 20 times in that hour. Why we look at Christianity like that? The testing of your faith and pushing in obedience. We're not perfect, guys. But we can push for more with God. For more faith and more faith. Until that point, but tomorrow we're going to grow further. Like the guy going in the gym. We're going to grow further. We're going to grow. That guy, what is the word? Perseverance. That guy going to the gym. He has a certain attitude. Because of that, some faith. That things can, can, can be better. But faith that things can work for me. And out of that place, a perseverance for a certain result. Perseverance so that what? Perseverance so that you can have a certain quality in your life. And that is obedience. Obedience, once again, not to be naughty or not naughty. To be good or to be bad. That's a tree of knowledge of good and evil. Obedience is not for that. To be good or to be bad. Obedience is a proper quality, pure, beautiful response in a covenant. It's a beautiful response in a covenant. Hello? Are you with me? A beautiful, loving response in a covenant. And that is in the word obedience. It's not, do as I say, otherwise you are in trouble. You know, not under the law of religion and performance. Not under the law of religion and performance. But as a response in covenant, a beautiful response in covenant, we call that obedience. And persistence, you learn persistence. Hallelujah. Good. A proper response. Is he not here? Are you here? So my brother, my sister, when you think about obedience, God says, if you love me, you'll be obedient. If you love me, you'll have a beautiful response to me. That's what God is saying. If you love me, you'll obey me. What is he saying? He's not manipulating you. <laughs> what is he saying? If you love me, you'll have a beautiful, quality, pure response to me in your relationship with me. And that is called obedience. May God help you to purify it up here and here in the heart. What obedience is all about. Amen? It's not your God wanting you not to be in trouble. Even in discipleship. Amen. You see how many of that rubbish is still in your heart. When you are in discipleship and, oh, you know, I'm going to be in trouble with my cell leader or with, the, or with that or the pastor or with the guy where I am supposed to do the work and I better do all my work because I wasn't going to be in trouble with a boss. What about this lifestyle? There's nothing of this lifestyle there. Because if there's something about this lifestyle that we're talking about, then it's a perseverance not to be in trouble, a perseverance to have a certain quality life with God. Perseverance to have a quality life with God. I obey as if unto the Lord. I obey as if unto the Lord because I want to have a quality life with God. So let's not waste our life. Amen. Pure joy, your attitude, testing of your faith because you have gold in you. Produce perseverance so that what? You can have a quality response in covenant. And that is called obedience. Number four, faithful servant. Faithful servant. Your faith produces perseverance. And perseverance must finish its work. So that you may be mature, grow up, and complete. Not lacking anything. Not lacking anything. You have all the cars that the world can give. All the money that the world can give. All the this and all the that. No. That is not lacking anything. 
so that you will be mature and complete, not lacking anything to do His will. Not lacking anything to have this quality relationship. Not lacking anything to walk with Christ. Not lacking anything because God wants to enable you to have this excellent life with Him. God wants you to lack nothing to have an excellent quality life with Him. But you need to work it out through the Holy Spirit and through the Word. If you don't work it out with the Holy Spirit and the Word and put your heart in it, you will not have, you will not experience that what God has for you. Are you with me? Is it not here? Complete to become mature. Complete a faithful servant. It's a certain stature. But my brother, my sister, you'll be a servant. A servant under a curse. Faithful to your temper, faithful to your attitude, faithful to your negativity, faithful to your compromise, faithful to always judging people, faithful to those mindsets that you cannot get rid of. You are in covenant with that thing and you will become a faithful object, a faithful whatever towards that thing. Or you will become a faithful servant towards the Lord and his word. But when you are a faithful servant, God says, I don't call you servant. I call you my friend. But there's no, not such thing as a friend of God that I say I'm a friend of God. Moses was a friend of God. But it was a certain lifestyle. I don't have to perform. But a friend of God has to do with I have a certain quality life with him. Friend has to do with a certain type of relationship. I know we have that song, and we can sing it by faith that we will become a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. But that friendship is not cheap. Sorry. Don't perform for that. But get into the quality of who he is. Flesh cannot live before a consuming fire. I can say, walking in the flesh, I'm a friend of God, as if this flesh is okay in the presence of a consuming fire. It's impossible. God wants to be your friend. But for that, I need to grow as a faithful servant. Because you heard my word, because you obeyed my word, because you respect my word and respect me, I don't call you servants anymore. I call you my friends, Jesus said to his disciples. What an honor to become a friend of God. But let's grow to become a friend of God. But it's not a cheap relationship. Like with a woman or a guy. Cheap relationship. We call that prostitution. But if you want to have a relationship in marriage or quality relationships with brothers and sisters, parents and children, it's going to put, you have to put something in. Because that's the example that we see with Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He gave, they gave their everything. Everything. Are you with me? Are you still here? That's who you will become. Faithful servant to your fear, to your anxiety, faithful servant to your success, faithful servant to your money, faithful servant to your circumstance, that if the circumstance is good, then I'm good. Faithful servant to your emotions. When you feel good, you are good. When you feel bad, no, it's not going good with me because I feel this. It's going excellent with me because I feel good. Is that how you determine how you, who you are and how you feel? Because you're a faithful servant to what you feel. Huh. Faithful servant to your emotions, a faithful servant to the right of, I will close my heart towards that man. I will open my heart towards that man. I have the right to do with my heart what I want because I'm in covenant with my heart. Ah, you're in covenant with God and this heart belongs to him. you with me? May God help you. Faithful servant, number four. Number five, there's seven points. Prayer in faith. For what? For what, man? In this, air, in this whole process of, of what we're supposed to do and how to see life and how to let things work out in my life, to understand my stature, 
God says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe, you must believe, you must have faith, and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. Like a wave. Here's your prayer. Shh. It's wave and it's finished and it's gone and it's it had power for a moment and the next one went psh, that powerful wave that can even destroy a lot of things next moment psh, and it's gone nothing to to be seen i cannot have that type of faith or prayer are you with me i've experienced that in my life i don't know about you guys but i need to get out of that place but interesting, God is talking about a lot of stuff. It's like somebody talking about, you know, uh, how you must eat your beans and your pumpkin and your potatoes and your meat. I wonder if it's going to rain. And if, if you don't understand the rain, um, remember that your car must have four wheels. Is God speaking like that? No. So why will he suddenly speak about if you lack wisdom? I mean, it's so out of context of what he just spoke now. No, it's not out of context. Wisdom is practical application. If you lack the practical application, if you lack the capacity how to put this principle on the ground of how to choose your attitude to count it all joy, it doesn't matter what the heck you're going through. If you don't understand the testing of your faith in what it's supposed to produce and how faith is actually precious as a awesome product of the word and you don't understand it that perseverance all of this so that you can come into this place of having a quality eternal precious relationship with a proper response through obedience in your covenant with him if you don't understand how to put it on the ground practically he says just pray by faith god will really give you the capacity he will really give you to the know-how how to put this on the ground as a lifestyle for you. That's why, he, just throw that in. If you like wisdom, pray. God will give it to you. He will not hold something against you. The mishaps, the, the, the failures of yesterday, he will not keep that against you. He will give you today exactly the capacity. How to put these principles on the ground. So that you will lack nothing to have quality, beautiful relationship with God. You will lack nothing. But otherwise, what a waste of prayer. It's just like with a, going with a wave and psh. Everybody say psh. Please, don't go and have that psh prayer. Okay? That's the prayer without the faith. Hallelujah. God will help us. Pray. Faith for what? Okay. Number six, focused. Everybody say focus. Now say it with attitude. Focus. Okay. Let's go. Verse seven. That person that is warawaring with a prayer, that person should not expect to receive anything from the lord you're wasting your time even to have an expectation don't even try to have an expectation to get something from god if i'm just wara worrying around and at the end of the day i use my faith and my prayer as a trick to change my circumstances instead of understanding how to have a beautiful quality relationships in the mid relationship in the midst of whatever don't expect anything such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Double-minded, focused. <sighs> What's the problem? I have the voice of the circumstances speaking. I have the reminder of my failures. I have the reminder of when I tried any type of work. I have the reminder of that, what that other guy said. And my heart is 10% here, 20% there, 50% there. It's not going to work. And because it's all there, I cannot have faith 
in my prayer and my faith will not work so I'm wasting my time to ask for wisdom so that I can practically put all these stuff on the ground so that I can have quality life what a waste so where do we start in the place of get your heart with God allow God to take your heart like this and put your heart together in one place so that you can focus on him remember what we said last week of Zechariah 6 12 behold the man look at the man watch the man keep inside the man guys you were not here just get it on the family group home family group please work through that behold the man that you know how to worship him in the midst of you will adore him more than anything else you will be captivated by him not captivated by your success and your failures or your strengths or your weaknesses or what the thing that you focus on the most you will know I'm captivated by that I'm worshiping that thing but if I push to see him in the midst of that I will worship him in spite of I will praise you I will worship you I love you Lord you're going through hell according to you that's how you feel you just say more and more Lord I love you in spite of what I love you I love you you speak it forth by faith Amen, because you decided I consider it pure joy. Not because I feel the love. Not even that I feel his love or feel that I want to. I will declare it by faith. Lord, I love you. You are my master. Amen. Amen. So in this focus, behold the man, watch the man. Watch the man because he has the final authority. You watch authority. If you know that is the final authority, when he will say, left, then everything, the whole universe can change. When you understand he has the final authority, he's the line of Judah, then you watch, you watch the man for any sudden move. Because when he will say, hmm, the whole universe can change. Are you with me? So if you respect him, you understand his authority. You watch the man. Keep in sight. That's practically, yes, like we said. When you're going through a lot of stuff and you're working. Do you do it later, oh, don't, uh, I work so much. Even I work for the Lord. There's no time to have time with the Lord. No, no, no. Then the, also a, a problem is that they where I work, I'm supposed to keep him in sight. Everybody say, keep him in sight. It's not like I do my work and then I go and I focus on him again. No, I am supposed to be keeping him in sight while I am working. Amen. And then the last one was look at the man. That is in relationships. That I can just be able to look in the mirror and look at Christ. Look at your, your friends and not just see the problems or the frustration or whatever. That you can look at Christ in creation. Look at Christ in the crown of creation your brother and sister I want to know nothing among you Paul says except Christ and him crucified look at him and if you can see him like Job went through all hell and a lot of turmoil a lot of questions a lot of stuff but at the end of the day when God showed him in creation who God is and he said hey I spoke and I had a lot of things to say, but I will be silent because I've heard about you. Now I've seen you just to see him. I said in the first service, especially long ago, from then up to yes now, in the evening sometimes I will, when I would lock, I would just walk out in the garden for 20 seconds and I would just look up and say, Thank you, Lord, for who you are. I love you. I wanted to say have a good night, but um, he will have a good night. Look, listening to all the other guys on the other side of the earth, you know, it's still day. <laughs> but, but on this side, we're going to have a good night also with him. Um, just technically speaking. But just to go out and just say, God, I love you. Just look at the universe and, and look at him. Just 
Look at it. I'm not talking about worship. I'm not talking about watch for the sudden move. I'm not talking about keep him in sight in the midst of everything that you do. I'm talking about just looking at him. May God open up those four facets to you, my brother, my sister, so that you become focused. Focused. Amen. As you lament me. That was verse 7 and 8 and the last one. Number 7. <laughs> Focused, my brother. Praise the Lord. Motivated or driven. Verse 9 to 12. Believers in humble circumstances. Okay. What are we talking about? Motivated. When the money is not there, you don't have money for food, or you don't have money for this, and you have a, this lack, oh man, then you can see what's in your heart. Papi, when this is broken, that is broken, suddenly you need 5,000 rand here, and this happened, and your, the washing machine broke. Just don't tell the leaders. I mean, I mean... And God, how can we help? How can we help this, the church with this washing machine that some other person, by coincidence in love, broke? Um, what are we saying, man? Our attitude, our relationships, how we see life when we have lack, when we have nothing. Um, and how you see, you are praying, you are fasting, you are speaking the word, you are believing. And you just, just, just look as if you are surviving. And this other guy, he's wara wara in. And he's praying a one or two or three prayers, most probably, I think, at least. And he's just forsaping in all the money. He's just having it all. Interesting. Believers. In humble circumstances, not in poverty. You call it humble circumstances. Tomorrow, if you don't have money to eat, uh, Pastor, I have a very humble circumstance. <laughs> I don't have money to eat. I know, Tyron, you will use that now against me, eh? Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. In their stature that they can stand in the midst of whatever they're supposed to take pride in that be excited because they are standing in the midst of whatever take pride in their high position but the rich should take pride in their humiliation that sounds bad since they will pass away like a wildflower they're supposed to understand what I have is just God's grace but it's not just God's grace. Because God's grace is even more on the other guy in humble circumstances. It's not like this guy has more grace because he has more money. No, that's not what he's saying. That's not what he's saying. But I'm motivated by him and his grace and his love in who he is. And without him, I am nothing. I am nothing. So the fact that I have a 200 or 200 million it must be a servant for the same purpose, to have a quality lifestyle with God. It's just my responsibility is so much more when I have to make sure that I don't become the servant of the 200 million. But that the 200 million stay a servant for the purposes of God. So make sure you stay in humility as a protection. But the rich, the rich should take pride in the humiliation since they will pass away like the wildflower for the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Just one day they have everything. One day the bullions are there. The next day there's a war. And suddenly everything has no value. And nothing can secure me from death, from destruction, from a war around me. Are you with me? Just like in one day. We've seen that. We've seen how the world just with a lockdown can... <laughs> yeah. And some people that built a life, it's just gone. 
But when the storm comes, the, revel the revelation of your foundation is revealed. The house built on the rock will stand. And God's going to brag with his church. And may we not stand ashamed in how we've built a life when the storm comes. The issue is not the storm. You cannot pray the storm away. The storm will be sent by God and by the devil. The one believing you will be destroyed. The other one believing that you will stand. Are you with me? But if you've built on the foundation of the word, you will stand and you will brag. Because the world will ask, how are you be able to stand like that? Because my foundation is Christ, the revelation of who he is. Are you with me? You are motivated. You are driven. But may the driving force not be fear. Opposite of love. May love always be this driving force. Let's just quickly read further. Blessed is the one who perseveres. Perseveres. Going through these processes. Under trial. Because having stood the test. Coming to a place of purity and genuineness and the integrity that person will receive the crown of life that the lord has promised to those who to those who to those who love him your motivation driven by love so at the end of the day all this stuff when you stand you understand your riches you understand your humble situation you understand what you're going through you are stand with perseverance because you counted it all joy that everything will work for the good when you come in all of this, you are blessed. And God will reward you with a crown of life. Why? Because in all of this, at the end of the day, you are motivated by love. You can't eat all joy because my God is a God of love. How many people? If God is a God of love, why will he allow this? Why will he allow that? Hello? There's a stop street. Stop street, there's a clear sign. This example cannot work in English. Stop doesn't mean sue trap on petrol. I don't know what's that in English. So nobody ever wants for that in English. Okay. Um, whatever. But it's a, it's a simple sign with a certain purpose. So you don't stop at the stop street. You just go over and uh, you are smashed and... and Somebody is destroyed and you are in, in whatever hell of a situation. Why did God allow it? Why did God allow me to go over the stop street? He placed the stop street there because he knew an accident could happen. That's why as a father he would want his child to stop at a stop street. It's very simple. It's not a complex thing. We made it now very complex to understand his heart and why he allowed it. We need to get scripture and we need to understand. We're going through turmoil to clean our hearts and not to go in bitterness and, ah, for the next 50 years. God didn't do that. You made the decision not to stop at the stop street. Like I said, only the one there at Ultra City, that's not accurate. It's supposed to be a, a yield. Yeah, yeah. We don't agree with those guys there. But, but further, what are we saying? My brother, don't let life become so complex. Just in simplicity, understand. And you do what you do. You obey the word because you're motivated not by fear, but by love. After everything, you have given your life. You have done this. All this discipline. You consider it joy. You gave your life. You were in prayer. You're a power man. If it's not done in love, it's nothing. Rubbish. And then later, okay, let's then talk about what is love. If that is not done in love, it's rubbish. Okay, so what is love about? What is the quality of love? And at the end of the day, the three remains. Faith, hope, love. And the greatest of that is love. 2 Corinthians 5, driven by love amen. amen because god is love so in that if you do it because you love him you will receive the crown of life and my brother and my sister i don't believe it's just the day when you die you're going to heaven you receive a crown of life the crown of life tomorrow 
that when you stand as a faithful servant, you've counted it joy, you have a certain attitude in life. There's a certain sparkle, there's a certain uh, brightness in you. Let's say, I will have a brightness in me. Okay, let's try and say it everything, everybody. I will have a brightness in me. My brother, can you also? Yeah, 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 you're looking there. Yeah. No? Now look at me again. One, two, three. Oh, let's say that again. One, two, three. I have a brightness in me. Oh, he's trying to say that, but God will help him in Jesus' name. That brightness is through the Holy Spirit. That brightness is through the life that God wants to give you. Hello? But it will not come. You will not my dove, yes. Like a dove. No, not cuckoos. But life is messy. Life is dove. If I'm under that oppression of the law and oppression of whatever the world can bring in me. But you know it's like a crown. It's like a reward tomorrow if you can see the brightness of life. And tomorrow God wants to reward you with a crown of life. What does that mean? You have authority to have a life that is from heaven. I'm in this world, I'm not from this world. And what I have and what I live by is from heaven. It's from heaven. And tomorrow the reward Blessed are you. Last time. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive, will receive this crown of life. You will receive this beauty of life, this majestic life tomorrow with Christ. You will receive it tomorrow so that what? At the end of the day, enter the joy that your master enjoys. He talks about the guys standing at the end of their lives before the Lord. Oh, you're a sheep, you're a goat. But the one that was a faithful servant says, enter the joy that your master enjoys. The joy that you chose in your attitude. The joy that you chose in the, your attitude. Hello, first point. The joy that you chose in your attitude. At the end of the day, enter the joy that your master enjoys with a crown of life. With majestic life, with an awesome life that you will enjoy what the master enjoys. And tomorrow you can be excited about the same things. Tomorrow you can be passionate about the same things you and your father, you and your master. You can be excited about the same thing. That is like the crown of life that you will have tomorrow afternoon. When I choose by God's grace to take these things and live by it. Amen. Thank you, Father, that you just come and you do a special work in each one of us, Lord. Please, Lord, and for every man and woman in this place, come and touch them. With each of these points, we respond and say, God, come and do your work in us. Let your word work in us, Lord. We trust you for that. If you are sitting here, and we're going to pray for some of you guys. We all make the decision, but if you struggle to find joy in the midst of trials and you're struggling to to make that decision sometimes too easily become negative don't you understand just where you are with every eye closed we want to pray for God to touch you in a special way please I just want to, you to stand if you know you're struggling to find that joy to make that decision for joy Father I pray for every man and woman standing I pray that you will have a specific excellent touch on them that you will touch them in a very precious, precious way. In a very precious way. We say they will break through like never before. They will have a breakthrough like never before in Jesus' name. Come and meet them in their dreams. Come and meet them there at the workplace. Come and meet them where they are, Lord. Please, Lord, let your grace be on them in a very unique way. And we thank you for the breakthroughs you're going to have for them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You can sit eyes closed. If you are sitting here and you know testing of your faith leading to perseverance, too many times you are discouraged. Too many times you, you go into discouragement. You try and you try, but when it's not working, you just quit it. And you know that God needs to do this perseverance thing in you. I know we are all going for it. We all make that decision today. But if you need a specific breakthrough, and you know between you and God, that breakthrough you need today, 
I want you to stand. We're going to pray that God will give that specific breakthrough for you about perseverance. God, I pray for every man, woman standing. God, I pray that you will help them. You will guide them in this process of the testing of faith. To persevere in love. To persevere in faith. To persevere in that what you have. To persevere in, in the integrity. And that what you want to put in their lives. Come, Holy Spirit, to persevere, to, to seek you, to seek the gifts, to seek the presence of the Holy Spirit, to seek who you are, Lord. That your anointing, your anointing will flow over these men and women like never before. Because they will understand perseverance. We break every form of performance in the name of Jesus. It, there will be no performance to break through. But there will be a perseverance that's pure. To have intimate, intimate quality relationship with you. Thank you, Father, that you touch them in a special way. Thank you. You can sit. Lastly, yes, you know to be driven by love and no, no fear. If there's sometimes too many fears that you need to deal with, that they fear they will not, they will be lack, or fear that you will not make it, fear that this is not hap going to happen or that. We're going to deal with this fear finally today in Jesus' name. I want you to stand. If you the same guy that stood, then you stand again and you, we take that fear thing. God, you have not given these men and women a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And we speak forth your word over every man and every woman in this place in Jesus' name. They have not received the spirit of slavery to fear again, but the spirit of adoption through whom they cry out, Abba. Papa, that is the spirit in them. And therefore fear, what do you have in these people? Nothing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Because the perfect love in them drives out all fear. Drives out all fear. God, let your love work out the fear in their hearts or in their lives, Lord. In Jesus' name, they will not be bound by fear, but they will be driven by love. Thank you for a special way, Lord, even in dreams, even at nighttime. Even there where they are alone, they will know. The covenant with fear is broken. It's broken through the blood of Christ in the name of Jesus. It's broken. We, they turn their backs on fear and they walk away into that what you have for them. Thank you, Father, for their breakthrough that they will have like never ever before. So they will be overcomers more than, than conquerors in Jesus Christ. Thank you for that, Lord. Give them a hand. Hallelujah.